Dan Beanie fans and welcome. In today's episode, one question that crops up quite frequently is how do I install a Hambini bottom bracket in a Winspace frame? So this is my Winspace T1500 and I'm going to show you. The first step is to thread any DI2 wires, cables, that kind of thing and then make sure it all works. Then you need to clean it and use the cleanest rag that you can find. Then the next thing you need to do is to measure it and this is coming around at, although you can't see, 40.97 which is absolutely bang on. It needs to be somewhere between 40.95 and 41 millimeters. So it was there. What you'll need to do is you need to do it on the other side as well. If it's undersized, I do have a video on how to whiffle. I will link to that in the description. Now you've got a little bit of a dilemma and it depends on which bottom bracket you intend to fit. Now if you're fitting a, a necked bottom bracket then you can just avoid this next bit but if you're going for the standard bottom bracket you'll need to file that riv nut or the end of it off. It's slightly proud. So this is just a fairly fine metal file and what I've done is I've backed that uh, screw out slightly because it's harder than the aluminium around it and literally all you've got to do is file. Now it's a bit more difficult with me holding the camera and trying to file but you could also use a Dremel if required. If you are going to use a Dremel what I suggest is you actually come from the opposite side to where you need to so you can see when you're dremeling. It didn't actually need dremeling but I've dremeled it anyway for the purposes of the video. Now we need to put all those DI2 wires, if you have them, up and in and out the way. I can just see we've got a couple of DI2 wires up there, which when we push it in will move out of the way. Now it's time to get the bottom bracket ready, take the cap out of the drive side. The bottom bracket started now, so the bottom bracket's here, um, there's the pushing in piece here and on the other side is the receiver and the other part of the press and now all we do is just tighten this and it will go in halfway, then go slack and then we can push the rest in. Point, what I've done is I've just slackened the bottom bracket off on the non-drive side just to make sure you've not got any cables that uh, you may pinch. You can also decide if you choose to put retaining compound in at this stage. I'm choosing not to. Just giving it a couple more turns to get it going to see it on the other side and then we just carry on pushing. Now just be careful because you can see this is about to hit my front derailleur so if we turn it up to that position, we won't get that issue, and then tie in on the other side. Then we take this apart. Check is get a feeler gauge, if you haven't got a feeler gauge, a piece of paper, and then rub it all the way around to see if it's seated all the way around. That is really quite good. Now you can put your cap back in, and it's ready for a crank set. Then we can fit the crank, gone for 105 because it's not uh, glued. Crank arm on the other side is installed and then can give it a spin. So this really shows how good a decent bearing fit is. Bottom bracket's bang on and so the uh, crank spins quite freely. Well, it wouldn't be a Hambini video without a PowerPoint, would it? I just couldn't help myself. I haven't really gone to town with the wording today, but uh, the Winspace BB install by Hambini, aged five. This is only going to be brief. The few things that you need to look at um, and some of the specs to, to go through just as an overview of that uh, sequence of fitting parts. Um, the BB type that you need if you've got the T1500 um, I mean, I've fit the BB86 next, and you can get the, the 
non-necked one to go in, but you do need to do a bit more filing. And uh, the thread together one, that will definitely go in, um, but it's not technically as good, it's not as stiff. Hole size, I've already mentioned, so 40.95 to 41 is the spec size, and 40.97 is recommended. Retaining compound, so you need an activator because it does not work very well if you don't use it. If you look at the Henkel um, guidance, they just say it takes longer to go off. In my practical experience, I don't think the shear strength is, is anywhere near as strong as if you don't use the activator. Obviously that depends on whether you're gonna use retaining compound or not, and there's a whole argument over that, and I'll put a link to that um, uh, below. There's a post on my website about it. Uh, retaining compound self-explanatory, you can use 638 if uh, you want a high strength bond. The axial gap, so the feeler gauge test, um, a sheet of paper is generally 0.1 millimeters, um, but ideally you wanna be half that. Bearings, so the bottom bracket uses 605s, they are NTNs. The bearing clearance is set up for NTNs. If you put something else in there, then it may screw up. Um, and yeah, just be wary of counterfeits. I mean, I've had um, bottom brackets which have come back allegedly um, you know, problematic at the bike shop and they've changed the bearings and you can clearly see they're fake. I mean, the seals are the wrong colour um, and they were supplied by some, I wouldn't say reputable, but some bike shops um, that have got a very prominent online presence, certainly in the UK anyway. In fact, some have been busted, but there we go. Um, the grease chart. Now, this is a bit of a, a hot topic. Again, there's also a, a link on my website about that. Um, the grease is typically in, well, there's a few ways of measuring it, but um, one common way is the NLGI class, uh, and then triple zero through to six, and I've sort of put in the consistency there. Fluid is basically like water, and then very hard is like butter. Um, for, I mean, all round grease, you could use this two ways. So you can use the grease as an assembly aid or as a lubricant. If you're gonna use it as a lubricant, then I'd recommend a zero. Um, and that that's quite good for summer use. Uh, it's not very water repelling, um, but it, it's very low friction coefficient. If you're gonna use as an assembly grease, then number three, an LGI three is the way to go. So what I would recommend is if you want like an all round grease, a one, a two would probably be the ideal. So you can use that as an assembly grease or as a lubricant. Assembly grease is a bit different because you're only using it once and the balls in the bearings aren't going round. You're just using it to make your life easier to install. Um, and that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, pop them in the box below and I'll do my best to answer them and I'm pretty sure Winspace will be along to answer them as well. Thanks very much. Until next time, keep banging your hairdresser.